on to the third speaker of this afternoon. Um, I would like to first say that unfortunately Dr. Rafael Espinosa had uh, some reasons why he couldn't travel to New Orleans. Um, but uh, we are very delighted that Dr. Kim Akuri is joining us, and he's also with Emerging Fuels Technology, which is in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, Dr. Akuri is currently the uh, Senior Vice President of, en of Engineering uh, of uh, Energy uh, Emerging Fuels, and he's also a co-author, and he has kindly agreed to step in uh, and give this presentation. The title is uh, factors influencing the configuration of an XTL plan. Thank you. Please help me uh, welcome Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Akuri. Did I say that right? Yes. Pronounce it? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, uh, my, uh, my presentation will show why nine women can't deliver a baby in one month because <laughs> It wasn't until Saturday I knew I was coming up here, and uh, I had to make the presentation very quickly. Uh, and um, my limp is because I was trying to play rugby with 18-year-olds in St. Louis on Sunday, and uh, <laughs> realized I can't. Okay, so um, we'll start. Um, uh, Burning fuels were uh, uh, just a small uh, a technology company. We also run a. Um, a laboratory services, a couple of people in here have used our lab services, uh, we're also developing Fisher Trolls, so um, we're uh, basically bought the Centrolium uh, laboratory when Centrolium decided to uh, scale itself down. Uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to move forward. Okay, so um, uh, Raphael and I and Ken Ag are the old men of the facility. We have about 25 guys uh, working. Uh, we have some technology. We have rights to a lot of other technology. Should we want to use it? The Fisher Tropes, and uh, and again, uh, about half our revenue is working on Fisher Tropes, and the other half is uh, doing uh, other laboratory operations <coughs> on a service basis. A GTL plant, I don't know how many people have seen this, but there's, um, it's probably been shown over the last 90 years, probably a million times. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is really we're going to step away from any catalyst characterization or performance. We're going to say, okay, we have a catalyst that performs a certain way. How do we put that catalyst into a plant? And uh, we're going to cover a, a lot of issues very likely just to, just to let you aware that you know the, the, the a lot of us can and I was one you know you're in on all the details of the catalyst but as you put the catalyst into a reactor and build a plant around it uh, some issues become uh, some issues you thought were very important aren't and other issues that you never really thought of become very important and so we'll try to touch on that uh, our basic plant we're talking about is we make syn gas, we run an FT, and then we do some hydro processing, which we'll call hydro cracking at this point. Uh, here's a picture of just a little propaganda for everyone. Um, here's a picture of a, uh, uh, that is the TRI gasifier, and over to the left is one of our fixed bed towers. We'll be talking exclusively about the old-fashioned fixed bed reactors, uh, nominal one-inch uh, I'm going to put in a plug here for, for uh, Bert. I, I've known Bert on and off for 20 years, and one thing about, uh, I guess I've dealt much more with Bert's students than Bert, and uh, all his students have uh, I've all shown to be uh, you know, an excellent uh, legacy to his ability to teach. Uh, and uh, some of his students are in this, both sides of this unit. Uh, a process overview, just to show you, uh, now I am going to learn how to work this right here. Uh, the, the pointer is, uh, it picks me up here, thank you. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, all right. I think I got it now. Uh, I haven't been one of these for 15 years. Uh, the last time I remember we held a, can a candle in a, in a lantern. All right. This is basically a unit. Uh, a, uh, this would be a, uh, a process and basically all the components. You know, the top row is just making syngas. The next row is uh, making liquid products. And, um, and then we have our um, uh, utility systems, which we break out, and there are different ways to break it up. And um, we took out the numbers, but you can put a material balance across this, and we left some of our, uh, our side chatter in terms of uh, uh, when we set uh, water quality standards or air emissions. And one of the uh, major factors, whether it's a BTL or a GTL or a CTL or an XTL plant, is when you look at it and you focus in, a lot of focus is right here on the Fisher Tropes, uh, maybe on the reforming and, uh, or uh, gasification, and then we can talk about hydro processing. But there are a lot of other boxes in there which really can't be taken for granted that, uh, you know, uh, give you an idea of your, um, the, your utilities and the way you set up your utilities. We'll talk about steam, water system, uh, how you're going to treat water, how you want to have wastewater traffic uh, or water traffic through your plants, on-site recycle. Am I doing something here? Uh, on-site recycle or uh, uh, can add about, it can affect your plant of about 60%. I must be doing something. I'm trying not to. Okay. All right, I'm going to touch the podium. All right. Uh, I'm going to go. All right, can everyone hear me? Okay. Okay, I'll talk from here. And I need money. All right. And, uh, by the way, there are several people in this audience that probably know more about the subject than me, and if they ask me any questions, I'm going to quickly uh, point that out. Uh, so we go to the next. Uh, uh, I'm doing this. Uh, okay. When you look at the plant now, and you've laid it out, and now you look at layout, I just want to show you. Um, I'm going to be talking about about a two thousand barrel a day. I'm not talking about a sasol size plant at a hundred thousand. Those are. Uh, uh, we're going to stick with what we know, which is in the range of a 2,000. You know, we've, we've stretched some of our studies. We've done some studies up to 10,000. But just to give you an idea, um, the layout, when you get to these small units, the layout uh, becomes, is, is probably a higher percentage cost than in a big unit when you're looking at, you know, I'm talking big units, 50, 100,000 barrel a day. So, you know, we're looking at maybe 900 by uh, 700 feet, and that's our focus on the smaller units. When we get to our uh, technology issues, uh, uh, we look at it and say, in any XTL plant, the first thing you gotta worry about is syngas, what's your syngas and what you're making. And, uh, and uh, once that's defined, you can start, you can sit down and say, okay, what's gonna be my major configuration around the FT? Am I gonna do single stage, uh, recycle with multi-stage, and how we want to uh, how you want to do the utility? Are we putting this in the desert? Are we putting this where water might cost us four cents a gallon versus 25 cents a gallon? If we look at the integration, uh, and the standard answer, I'm going to make power with my steam, uh, I'm gonna make electric power with my steam, basically never works. Uh, U.S. power rates in the United States are so low that, uh, you know, you're go it's a loser. Um, if you want to decide to become a one megawatt generator, there aren't many half or one megawatt uh, power plants in the world making business. So, but, uh, so that becomes an important part of your, integra iteration, uh, your integration. So th the biggest um, site factors when you sit down and want to start building a plant in terms of cost, Export energy consideration. Are you near somebody who wants something you make? The biggest thing you make you, uh, is excess steam. Uh, steam balancing a small plant is um, very difficult. I mean, the guys at Shell happen to have a whole complex to send their steam. You know, we've done some DOE projects with the Flambeau and DuPage on BTL. 
We happen to be near a um, happen to be near a big pulp and paper plant. Uh, they like every BTU above ambient. So, uh, but if you're on a remote standalone island, this becomes an issue. On the uh, power requirements, uh, are you um, uh, are you near five cent kilo uh, five cent uh, power? Uh, mostly everywhere in the U.S. you are, but that's another consideration when you take this worldwide. And the other most costly factor is water management. Can you buy water? You know, uh, can, is there a place to discharge it? You know, typically 100 BOD. If you can't, you're, uh, that's going to be a costly, uh, and, I, and I got myself lost again. Yeah. And, I, and it's, that can be a costly proposition. To give you an idea on cost, and this is, of course, we have done several full cost estimates. I mean, not us. We've had somebody who, um, is unbiased in costing it. In, uh, in, in the two to ten thousand, in the two to ten thousand barrel a day small fixed bed unit, use and, and uh, using standard ATR. Not I'm not I'm not trying to include any biomass gasifiers in here, which I'm not even going to pretend to cost because they can go all over the map. But use a standard ATR, you could get costs closer to the hundred thousand. Some people have been quoting seventy thousand. Let it be known, we're not quoting that. That's what's out there. It's more like $100,000 a barrel would be a cost for a 2,000 barrel a day, and that's a nominal 2,000 barrels. You can count it either FT barrels or, or a final liquid diesel naphtha. Um, OPEX is a, you know, 20 to $25 a barrel as opposed to, a, let's say, $15 a barrel for a larger plant. The, uh, when you look at the syngas source, when you're trying to sink an XTL plant, you can basically break it up by ratio and percent feed. The, um, the government, the RINs and blending credits now shift a carbon value to your product. So what happens is your, um, you know, if you're gonna get a, a, a buck a gallon or a buck 90 RIN, all of a sudden you could pay to recover more of your, your biomass carbon and go outside for external carbon for heaters and power. So they, they sort of disrupt the uh, overall balance depending on what product you're making. The, um, and then the product slate, uh, you know, 90% of the, uh, the issues we look at is you're making a, uh, uh, a diesel blend stock, which usually in the bio regime because the uh, you get, you really get no added RIN or blending credits if you uh, just make something you throw in the fuel tank. There is no value added to making specified products. But then in the GTL scenario, you know, you know the two, the sexy product is the SPK, which is the jet fuel blend, and then, you know, D975 is the product anybody can sell. Uh, uh, so that's an easy product to, to mark off and sell. So looking at ratio, you can look at the units, you can break it up into two types of ratio. And I'm thinking more, uh, I'm thinking more of uh, uh, where you source the sin gas. If you're, if you're way below two to one, and you have, you're coming from a biomass gasifier or some other source, and you have less than 24% CO in your gas, um, you wanna go down state, you wanna go just two stage. Uh, uh, and, and not worry about recycling because you're diluting. Now this is not true for iron. We have run iron cases and there is a recycle, some recycle credits for iron at low ratio and low CO. But you know, compression costs gonna come and start kicking you uh, when you're slinging all that CO2 around. Um, for natural gas, it's really a no brainer. You're at two or better. Uh, you're going to want to try to build one stage and recycle, and our friends from Sassel clearly demonstrate that in their design, and the uh, difference. Uh, uh, however, for small units, there, there you come to a uh, issue. Compressor, compressor management costs, costs as a second stage. It, it depends how small you are. We typically, you know, if you look at. Uh, uh, if you're building uh, reactors in the two to 300 ton weight class, not the 800,000 ton weight class, there, uh, there's, there's sort of a credit 
because the reactor cost now is competitive. There's probably about uh, probably about 80 shops in the United States that can build your um, 200 uh, ton, uh, 200 ton. I'm talking like less than 12 foot tube sheet and and uh, and uh, be uh, uh, competitive. You know, once you start getting up to 600 tons, or you go to the shell size of 1,200 tons, then there's a handful of people in the world, and then you have different negotiating and cost issues there. So again, uh, again, uh, uh, the costs I'm giving you are for more like the you know 200, uh, 500 to 800 barrel a day reactor sizing. Uh, there is an advantage when you're in the bio world, and we do this with several, we try to tell our clients, just make a blend stock, uh, a biodiesel. It's like, a, you can think of a biodiesel steroids. You know, you can probably mix it 10 to 1 instead of, uh, you can probably put in 30 rather than 1 or 3 percent. You know, take yourself up C24 and the carbon numbers and so negatively impact the uh, when you go to fully specified, you know, a D975, you're going to be in the 70 80% yield. I mean, if you go out and try to buy a license from somebody that sells the technology, they'll probably guarantee you 70 80%, uh, you know, 80% yield, material balance, you 75% guarantee. You know, JET has a much wider range, 60 to 75% effort right now, I guess, to make a lot of W, and so a lot of pressure to capture that carbon, you on a carbon efficient basis, I might get up to 70, 70, and we're talking SPK, it's like a minus 47, standard. Here are a, um, you know, just sort of this picture, you know, there's our hard wax, and then we make our products in little bottles from this. From you know, typically, the the state realm of the parameter growth an alpha of about 0.9 coming diesel ranger now the four yeah any of collection two that's a lift HFTL and liquid range like not
particular gasifier, and you can see the you can see the characteristic, boy, after we regen, we have great activity, and then, you know, there's a, there's a rapid decline, so we basically have to show, and uh, um, we basically have to show a long run with above desired activity. Regen's a whole range of uh, proprietary knowledge. There's lots of patents out there, so you can see what people do. Um, and uh, their regen can involve uh, running oxygen, putting it through an oxygen in the reduction sequence, uh, exon S patents with the aqueous phase. So there are, that, that becomes an integral part of the technology, which in turn your, your plant design, which in turn your operating philosophy. Uh, and then the last thing I'll talk about, because I'm not sure how in time I might be racing through here, but um, the other thing that happens when you put your plant together and you put your control and you're looking at your P&IDs, we, we do a, um, a transient analysis on the plant. What happens if, uh, let's say, this treatment goes, this uh, gas treatment goes out, or the gasifier itself refuses to go out, or, or if we have a recycle compressor. So what we do is we take the catalyst through paces representing uh, syngas partial pressures that will occur in the commercial plant due to a what-if scenario. And we have to do this because we have to go through the whole litany of liquidated damages, who's responsible for what. So this is just a little example of what happens. We lose feed, what happens to the tail gas, uh, and so we actually build a hard transient model based, and we do it in the lab, we do it on a pilot plant, and we can do it even on the big unit I showed you, where we take the gas through the compositional transients, which would we anticipate would happen in the commercial system, and we map them out, and we say what's going to happen to activity. And there are a number of times the activity does not recover. You have to go into a whole regen mode, or if it's in the case of a contaminant, you have to go into a whole replacement mode. So there is a... Uh, there's a philosophy. Here's one with the um, here is one with the steam drum. Uh, we get into a transient temperature um, uh, scenario. Something happens to the steam drum, or something happens to the flow. Our normal catalyst bed that maybe is running 50% above the uh, steam drum temperature decides to go to 80 degrees instead of 50 degrees. It heats up to 80 degrees. We have to do something in a hurry because. It can quickly go up to a thousand degrees above. Uh, so we build. So there's a whole a new control philosophy, because you always have a reserve volume of gas in the system. You're always going to have some head pressure. Or the, the line. You're always going to have fuel. It's not a boiler. So you know you're not going to build this uh, ASME Section 8 uh, boiler. You can't turn off the feed. We have to. Um, we have to have capacity, so it's either in a cool down, uh, gas vent, deep pressure. So there's a number of scenarios we go through. And I'm just showing a few examples. Here's a transient flow rate where the rate drops down. And our, our fresh feed gas is, uh, is nothing. Uh, it goes to zero. And here we have a uh, recycled temperature control, which would allow us to uh, maintain an acceptable syngas composition through the reactor. And uh, I think that's about it. And uh, again, you know, if you look at the factors, I just want to remind the biggest factor, uh, once you define your catalyst activity, making sure your system is always going to keep you in a realm of a successful partial pressure. And then, you, you know, tail gas water management and, uh, and uh, integration of utilities. And that's it. Me. Thank you very much. Uh, we have maybe time for one or two sh short questions. I actually have one. Yes, that's fine. I, I have a question. So, what's the next step? <clears throat> Where are you going with the technology? Us personally. Uh, yeah. Make sure you ask Steve that too when he gives his talk. But, uh, uh, we're hoping that right now with the uh, price of natural gas, the definition of remote gas has taken on a new, you know, you got guys at wellheads that are going to get $2, 250 So 
we're banking on natural gas staying where it is. You know, crude goes back up to 100, 100, over $100 a barrel. There will be a driving force to build um, GTL plants. There will be gas producers who sit there and go, I can't wait for gas to go up. I gotta get. And then, uh, and then of course, there's always the, you know, the desire for clean fuels. But you know, in my opinion, BTL, MSW, unless the government's going to subsidize those plants, they're never going to survive on themselves. You know, yeah. But so that's that's. So our philosophy is, we want one of you guys to come ask us to build, design your 2,000 or 5,000 barrel day plant. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.